A lot of people including myself use single-use cups like this in cafes getting takeaway coffee. I often wonder, what happens to them after I throw them away? The other day, I came across an ad on Instagram for a cup lid that claims to be home compostable. That caught my attention because I know that most takeaway cups from local cafes aren't suitable for home composting. So, I decided to test it myself and see how well they actually break down. For this test, I gathered some samples from two different local suppliers and my own collection of used cups. Here's what I have, a paper lid, a sugarcane lid, and an aqueous lining cup. My used cups act as a control to the experiment. They are PLA lid and cup normally said compostable or commercial compostable on the items, widely used in the cafes. For the experiment, me and my team used the sample cups and lids to drink coffee first, just to make the test feel more legit. When I used the sugarcane lid, it was already kind of melting, like the paper straws but not as bad, and it didn't bother me that much. And I got compost from a plant shop, and six jars with labels. We then tore the sample lids and cups into smaller pieces. When I tried tearing the PLA lid, I quickly realized, they're ridiculously tough. I thought I could just rip them apart with my hands, but I needed scissors. After everything in the jars, we sprayed some water and then placed them in a warm spot, the hot water cupboard. The experiment officially started on October 16, 2024. I know this jar experiment isn't a perfect replication of a real home composting setup. Key elements like garden microorganisms, air circulation, sunlight, and worms are missing. Like this cup, it breaks down from snail traces and sunlight without the compost. But I wanted to keep it controlled like this because I'm mainly looking to answer three questions. What will actually break down? What will get released into the compost if they do break down? And how do these samples compare to the control? While waiting for results, I did some reading on composting. This was a real test of my reading skills. First, I explored the terms compostable, commercially compostable, and home compostable to understand what they really mean and how they relate. Here are the definitions of the three terms. Pause the video to check the details. If you already have a rough idea, Skip ahead to this diagram for a visual explanation. This, compostable is the biggest category. Inside it, there's commercially compostable, which needs special industrial conditions. Home compostable is the smallest circle inside that, meaning it can break down at home, but usually, these materials also work in industrial composting. Now, let's turn our attention to the items we're testing. To better understand these items, my team gathered information on all the items we're testing, including descriptions from the suppliers' websites and the labels on the used cups and lids. Sample 1, 2, and 3 are the items sourced from suppliers. The lids and cups from cafes were only labeled as commercially compostable, compostable, or PLA, but we don't know the exact materials used in the cup. These are control 1 and 2. As you can see in the table, we also kept a jar of compost as a baseline for comparison. This is control 3, in case we get a chance to test everything in a lab later. Let's take a look at the materials in the home compostable samples. Aqueous lining cup, made of paper with an aqueous lining. Sugarcane lid, made from sugarcane pulp. Paper lid, made from paper, aqueous lining, ink, dyes and glues. Putting this table together wasn't easy. The language on the suppliers' websites is not very clear. But a few key details stood out. Aqueous lining still contains plastic. The website mentions it contains fewer polymers thanks to better technology. The paper lid is described as non-toxic inks, dyes and glues, but what does non-toxic really mean? The sugarcane lid seems promising, but how does it hold itself together without additives? Also, each item provided an estimated breakdown timeline. All three have similar timeframes, fully decomposing in about a year. Additionally, the sugarcane lid and aqueous lining cup state that they begin breaking down around 12 weeks. Next, we looked into the composting certifications, focusing on the ones that seemed most relevant. OK Compost Home, a certification by TUF Austria, 
which tests whether a product can fully compost under home conditions. All three samples have this certification. Commercial compostability. Each item also mentioned that it is commercially compostable with different certifications from TUF Austria. Earthworm approved, found on the paper lid, and I have to admit, it sounds catchy. But it's not a widely recognized certification and feels more like a marketing term. I mean, if a product already has a home composting certification, why mention earthworm separately? Additive-related certification. The sugarcane lid and aqueous lining cup have certifications related to additives, but they don't specify what additives are actually used, which I found interesting. All of these certifications come from two organizations, TUF Austria and Flustix, but there are no direct links to verify them using the certification numbers on the items. I searched for them myself, but without official links, I can't guarantee that what I found matches what the companies are claiming. These are the certifications listed on the product websites as of October 2020. After going through all the details, our three main questions are very valid, and this hobby research is getting intense. There's so much to read, and I'm doing my best not to get tangled in all these concepts. Since all this information comes from online sources, I'd love to hear from those doing real research in this field. If you can answer any of the questions I raised in this video, Please share your insights, it would help me a lot. To take the experiment further, we need to see how the commercially compostable items perform in a real facility. My team and I decided to visit a community composting site to see the process in action. I've marked the dates for everything that has already happened in this video and will update the timeline in future episodes as we continue testing. In the next episode, we will visit a community composting facility in Walkworth where Trish from Less Waste Walkwith will show us how their system works. Open the jars to see how the samples have broken down after 6 to 7 weeks. Subscribe and stay tuned.